my name is Dr. Valenzuela, and this is the lab where I do my surgeries, or where, where the, my surgeries are done in the lab in order to study sleep deprivation following septic insult. And what, this, this is an anesthesia machine which we use here in the lab. And uh, it's pretty much vaporized, hooked to oxygen tank. The oxygen tank is the, as a, I guess you would say, a power source. Without this, uh, you couldn't use the um, anesthesia machine. But basically, we, when we have surgery here, we put the mice in here in this little um, airlock container. Once it's locked, we have a timer for two minutes because that's the time that for them to be unconscious. And when we're doing surgeries, we put it at three percent for um, introduction, uh, induction. And then once the two minutes is up, we turn the isoflurane off. We flush it out with oxygen, make it 100 percent because you don't want to be breathing the isoflurane because it's really bad for you. But well, once once the mice are unconscious, we take them out of the the um, airlock box and we put them here in the pre-op area we have a, a nose cone right here but we usually put it right here and then to keep them unconscious at this rate we put it at two percent which is to keep them like for a surgery prep and once like once we, we, we shave them and we sanitize them so this this is a shaver we use to shave them so it's kind of loud but once they're shaved and sanitized we bring them over here to the surgery area. And what we, this right here where the, is where the surgery happens at. And once, once they're unconscious, we put the nose cone on them. And then at this rate, when, when we make the incision at the abdomen, we put it at 1% because um, the reason why we lower that is because you don't want your mice to overdose and die. And that's really bad for an experiment. But once we make the incision, it's at 1% isoforin, and then we take out the cecum. Then we have like this silk sutrin, and we tie it off into a knot. Then once we tie it off into a knot, we have a 18 gauge needle, it's, it's pretty big. And what this does is uh, the needle gauge determines degrees of sepsis. And once, once that is punctured, we put the cecum back into the abdomen, we sew it up with gut sutrin, and gut sutrin is, we separate the skin from the muscle. Like, to, it's pretty absorbent. Like it makes the heel, the muscles heal faster. Like, this, like, like, it's like, not, like it makes it less painful. And then this right here, it's a skin sutrin. The skin sutrin is what we use to sew the outer, the outer side of the muscle, the cover of the skin. And what that does is, you can tell the difference between the skin suture and the gut suture. The skin suture is blue, the gut suture is brownish. Once they are sewn, we use bacitration, just a little dab on the tip, and then we rub it on the, on the incision area to, make, to keep from infection area. And once that happens, we turn the isoflurane off, and we give them at least 0 0.1 milligrams of buprenorphine for pain. And uh, well, once, once that happens, we, we take them over here to the recovery area. And this is a heating pad which heats up to 126 degrees. And you don't want the, your mice at room temperature because they can get hypothermia real quick just like that because they're not used to the cold. And once, once from here, they, it, it varies from different ways. They go, we ever have like CLP, the sequel ligation puncture, which is what we just did right there. The second is sham, is where you do fake surgery, where you expose the cecum but put it back and sew it back. And after that, we do uh, sleep deprived, which, which is we put it over here to the shaker, and they shake for, it just depends on what we want, like three days or four days, maybe even an hour. But once, then the fourth one is uh, cecal ligation puncture and sleep deprived, which we just do the surgery, so like what we just talked about now with the tie off the cecum. And then right here, it takes them one to two minutes to recover from here. Now it just depends on where we want them. We either put them on the shaker or we like let them shake for at least a couple of days. And it just depends on what we want here in the lab. And so this is the lab that I work at.